Hello, my name is Maxime Blanson, and this video is the presentation for the PKC 2022 paper um, uh, that is joint work with Vladimir Beshevsky and Karen Guyen. Um, so first, uh, just a slide of notation, you can pause the video if you want to read. Um, okay, so as a summary, uh, the blind signature scheme is built upon uh, three major components. The first one being an encryption scheme that tolerates some computations on the, on the ciphertext. I'll come back to that uh, in later in the presentation. This in the, the second one is uh, a one-time signature scheme, which is uh, or originates actually from a uh, 2018 construction upon which we improve. And uh, the last one is a set membership proof, uh, which we just take as a black box. So in the end, uh, the scheme is round optimal. There's just two uh, communications between uh, the user and the server, and the signature in the end is about 150 uh, kilobytes. Okay, so the first part of this talk is the lattice-based one-time signature construction, which I just mentioned. Um, okay, so the 2018 construction uh, goes as follows. So you sample a uniformly random matrix A, and uh, the secret key is going to be a uh, uniformly, ra oh. uniformly random uh, short vector S and Y. By uniformly random and short, I mean that every coefficient is drawn uh, uh, uniformly between minus B and B, where B is some a small bound. And then uh, <clears throat> the public key is uh, V and W, which is A S and A Y. Now, if you wanna, uh, sign some message mu, so mu is a polynomial with binary coefficients, uh, then you're going to compute uh, the signature z, which is mu s plus y. And now if you want to verify the signature, you're going to check that a z is indeed equal to mu v plus w. And second, you're going to check that z is indeed small. Why is z small? It's because s and y are smaller than b, the infinity norm, and the multiplication of mu only uh, increases the size of z by some factor k that is small. Okay, so this is the 2018 construction, but now um, I move on to uh, the uh, overview of the security of this scheme. So let's consider some adversary A against the infallibility game of this one-time signature. So A, the adversary sees uh, the public key, V and W, and then he sees a signature sigma of some message mu. Uh, he produces a forgery for some message mu prime, which we call z prime, this forgery. And <clears throat> now the challenger for uh, this uh, unforgeability game knows uh, the secret key of the public key. So he knows the s and the y uh, corresponding to the v and the w, and then he can compute a honestly generated signature z, which is mu prime s plus y of this same message mu prime. Now what we can see is that we have two uh, signatures z and z prime that pass verification and that uh, are signatures for this message mu. So we have uh, a times z is equal to mu prime v plus w and the same thing for the z prime. Now to conclude that z minus z prime is a solution to cis for a, we have to prove that uh, z minus z prime is non-zero, otherwise this solution is trivial. So this is only uh, the only thing that remains to be proven. So the intuition why z is not always equal to z prime, meaning that the adversary doesn't always output a forgery that is the same as the one that would have been honestly generated by the, um, the challenger is as follows. So the idea is we take parameters for this scheme that are chosen so there exists at least another pair s star y star that verify the adversary's view. So the adversary's view is um, is this, so it's V, W, and the signature. And now what we say is that with the parameters we take, there exists at least two pairs of vectors S, Y, and S star, Y star, that verify this equation and that have small norm. So now from the adversary's perspective, both worlds, meaning the world in which the challenger sampled S and Y and the world in which the challenger sampled S star and Y star are uh, indistinguishable and therefore the adversary cannot always um, output Z equals mu prime S plus Y 
or z prime equals mu prime s plus y and sometimes he will pick the wrong one which is the good one for the challenger and for us and uh, which is mu prime s star plus y star and so when this uh, event happens which happens with uh, probability at least half then z is not equal to z prime and therefore the challenger recovers a cis solution for a a non-trivial one okay so <clears throat> We're not going to use uh, exactly this scheme, we're going to use a slightly uh, different one. So we uh, extend the previous construction to Gaussian uh, for the secret key, meaning that uh, so our scheme, the one we're going to use in the blind signature is exactly this one time signature, except the secret key here is sampled from a Gaussian distribution rather than uniform with a small coefficients. Um, so everything else is the same, the signature is the same, the verification is the same, except the norm of z uh, now depends on these uh, standard deviations sigma s and sigma y. Okay, so now if we want to look at the security of this Gaussian version of the one-time signature, well, uh, we have to take a look at the uh, original uniform distribution uh, security, which was uh, just a few slides ago. So uh, what we wanted was uh, that the adversary's view, which is VW in the signature, um, the, the, the doesn't, doesn't imply only one uh, solution for S and Y, which means that the, the, the challenger could have sampled either of the solutions and uh, the adversary cannot, cannot always find which one. So now uh, with uh, Gaussians, it's slightly different because um, we cannot uh, like every the, the, since Gaussians are not like have, have uh, not finite support just like the other uh, version. Um, there exists uh, some other solutions uh, that uh, come from the same distribution as S and Y and verifies uh, these equations. Except we want that uh, there's not only one solution that has non-negligible probability because for example if the Gaussian uh, if the standard deviation sigma s and sigma y are very small then uh, most likely there will be only one uh, solution which is the one that was sampled s and y that verifies the adversary's view and now we just have to take sigma s and sigma y wide enough so there are many solutions to uh, this equation with non-negligible probability uh, uh, for, for this distribution. And when this is done, then we can conclude the same way as we did before, which is the adversary can, cannot information theoretically uh, find, uh, always find the, the, the honestly generated signature as a forgery. Okay, so now I can move on to the second part, which is the blind signature. Uh, which is going to be built upon uh, this uh, one-time signature construction. So first, just a few definitions on uh, blind signatures. So in blind signature, you have two parties. Uh, you have a user and a signer. Um, so after the interaction between the user and the signer, um, the user should obtain a signature for his message under the public key of the signer. Now, uh, it's not the only thing you want out of a blind signature. You have some security notions that you have to fulfill. So the first one is blindness, which means that the signer should not learn anything about the message of the user. And he should not uh, know from when he sees the blind signature that is produced in the end. He shouldn't know during which interaction this signature was, um, was uh, produced. That's... Uh, obviously, because the, the message is part of, uh, like, to verify the signature, you have to have the message, and if you can link, then, then he learns uh, something about the message or the interact. Yeah. Okay, so the second one is one more enforceability, and uh, it goes as follows. After some, after some uh, interactions, say some number L of interactions between uh, the user and the signer, the, un the, the, the user should only be able to produce uh, L signatures. Uh, so basically you should not be able to produce L plus one signatures because, uh, well, then there's at least one signature that's, uh, uh, not, uh, not the result of an interaction of a honest interaction between the server and, uh, the signer and the, and the user. Okay. 
So um, now the intuition of our construction. So let me just first present a naive uh, approach that is not going to um, fulfill the blindness um, notion. So let's see. The public key is going to be a collection of uh, n one-time signature public keys. So here the one-time signature is the Gaussian version of the 2018 construction that I talked about in the first part of this talk. Um, so uh, second, the user will send his message to the signer. So this is obviously not blind then because the user just gives away his message to the signer. We'll come back to that later. Um, so the signer just got the message and you can compute the one-time signature of this message for uh, the ETH public key uh, of the scheme because the scheme is N uh, one-time signature public key. So it just picks one. It's actually a state which you will update uh, every every round um, during each interaction. So the signer sends this uh, one-time signature to the user and then the user can compute um, a zero knowledge proof that uh, he got basically this one-time signature for some index. So basically um, the, the user recovers Z from his interaction with the server uh, so Z is a one-time signature of his message for one of the public keys. And then um, he can prove uh, this statement here. And uh, this uh, should not uh, leak which index it is. Okay, so now this was the uh, non-blind approach. So there's a few things we have to uh, change. So first, uh, so the public key is still just a collection of n uh, one-time signature public keys, but now instead of sending directly his message to the signer, the user will encrypt it and send the ciphertext to the signer and a well-formed net zero knowledge proof um, to the signer. Now, before the signer had the message and so he could compute the one-time signature directly, but now he will homomorphically compute this, uh, like an encryption of the one-time signature uh, directly on the ciphertext, which will send to the user, and then the user can uh, decrypt the signer's response and just uh, keep on, just like uh, on the naive approach I just explained before. Okay, so a little more uh, specifically now, so the server setup is going to be uh, as follows. So he samples a, a short trapdoor, which is a matrix R, and then he sets the public key, the public matrix A to be uh, constructed like this, which you might uh, recognize uh, allows him to use his trapdoor to sample pre-images of vectors. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, he will sample uniformly random uh, VI and WI, uh, which is going to be the public key of the one-time signature. Now you can remember that in the one-time signature, the, the, the setup was you first sample the matrix A, then you sample the secret key S and Y, and you compute V and W as the public key. Now here, the server is going to do it the other way around, which is he's going to sample A with a trapdoor in it, then he'll sample V and W and sample a pre-image S and Y, a short pre-image S and Y from a Gaussian that is that is going to fulfill the same, the same equations as the the one-time signature. So the public key is just uh, this matrix A and the VIs and WIs. And the secret key of the server is uh, this matrix R. So as I just said, for every signature, the, the server will have to sample a secret key SI and a YI using the trapdoor. And um, for each signature, the user should generate a key pair for an encryption scheme and run uh, the setup of the set membership proof uh, for every signature. So even if he interacts several times with uh, the server, he should have a different, uh, the server should not be able to link uh, every, anyway. Okay. Um, so uh, the blind signature uh, itself, so the communication between the user and the server goes as follows. So first the server, the user will um, has a, some message mu, which it will encrypt into TNT prime using the public key you just generated. And then he will compute his zero knowledge proof that the ciphertext is well formed and it will send everything to the, to the signer. 
So the signer has some state i between 0 and n minus 1. Um, so he first verifies this uh, well formless proof, and if the verification passes, then he will uh, sample uh, the secret key from the one time signature, which is si and yi from Gaussians, uh, verifying uh, this uh, equation here. Um, and next, he will compute an encryption of the one time signature of mu directly on the ciphertext he received from uh, the user and it will update uh, its state and send the ciphertext to the user. So the user received the ciphertext, which he decrypts and gets uh, a one-time signature for his message under the ETH public key uh, of, the, of the server, the signer. So first he verifies that indeed there is an index for which uh, he has a valid one-time signature and then he will compute this, uh, this uh, zero knowledge proof um, that he, the, of, the, of the statement I just said, which is he has one uh, valid one-time signature for one of, the index, one of the indices. Okay, so that was the, the, the idea of the, of the blind signature scheme. Now I'll just uh, explain a little more about what the encryption scheme is and how the uh, computation on the ciphertex is done. So first, just uh, two slides. You can pause the video if you want to read um, further about this uh, encryption scheme. But the idea here is that this encryption scheme is a regular type uh, encryption. And uh, so the signer can homomorphically compute uh, an encryption of the, of the, of the, of the, one-time signature um, of the message mu because it's uh, linear. So if he uh, computes uh, capital F and F prime this way, so just um, the uh, the 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 encryption of uh, a vector is just the encryption of every uh, coordinate of the vector. Uh, okay, so. The adversary can do this. Now there's one, one wrong problem, which is uh, this leaks um, the, the secret key of the signer. And this is not something you want because this would break uh, one more uh, one more unforgeability. So now to fix this uh, problem, we use a uh, drowning, which is uh, as follows. So we generate, so the server would generate an encryption of zero with a uh, wide enough Gaussian noises. So first, He'll sample uh, y, y prime, and y prime with uh, independent Gaussian coefficients, and then he will compute some masks. So we have uh, this capital M and M prime, which are basically encryptions of zero, except the distribution of the noises uh, during a honest encryption, say, is supposed to have a different distribution. But uh, so here it's uh, white uh, Gaussians, and then he will compute uh, capital F and F prime as the, this, as we just shown here, plus uh, the masks, which are encryptions of zero and therefore the decryption of F under some other conditions I'm going, not going to uh, mention further here. Um, this, uh, the, the decryption still gives um, Z, the one time signature of the message mu. Okay. So now just a final slide about uh, the parameters um, of our scheme. So you have everything here. It's a screenshot from the, from the paper. So you can uh, pause the video and read if you want to see. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.